Howdy folks, welcome to Adrenaline Fueled Firearms. Hopefully welcome back to Adrenaline Fueled Firearms, but if not, welcome for the first time. I'm Scott. If you didn't know I'm Scott, I'm Scott. So, today we're going to talk a little bit about a firearm that you're not going to have a lot of opportunity to modify, but it's something that's in my safe. I wanted to kind of show it off, play with it, give you an idea of what it is. I discussed in one of my videos about how I tend to lean towards firearms that are service weapons, either military or law enforcement. This is one of those. This is the OG Thumb Eater itself, the OW <laughs> M1 Garand by Springfield, manufactured by the United States Army, primarily utilized during World War II to take out Nazis and whatnot. So it's chambered in 30-06. My understanding is there's a possibility to either rechamber it or find some in 308. But mine, man, that's gotta hurt. Mine's chambered in 30-06. It uses an internal stripper magazine that contains eight rounds. Um, it's bloody heavy. It's fun to shoot in my opinion. Uh, this one's in good condition, reliable, I haven't had any issues out of it. I sh don't get to shoot it as much as I'd like because the ammo is a little expensive and I darn sure don't clean it as much as I should. Because I'm lazy. But hey, that aside, I briefly gloss over the firearms that you can't really do a lot of modification with. Uh, I've said it before, I'm sure I'll say it again. Uh, my background is as a mechanic, I got this t-shirt for buying a $15,000 toolbox for Matco. What a deal, free t-shirt for 15 grand. Well, anyway, my backgrounds as a mechanic, one of the things I enjoy with the shooting sports is the ability to tinker. Piddle with this, piddle with that, swap some parts, try a new caliber, this, that, and the other thing. To me, that's part of what is fun when it comes to owning and operating firearms. So, I don't devote a lot of time in the video to this type of firearm because I'm trying to aim my videos at an audience that's similar to myself. People enjoy shooting, tinkering, piddling around, doing research about it, heck, window shopping it, you know. <laughs> Nothing stinks more than being halfway between two paychecks, flat effing broke, and something goes on sale and you're like, oh man, I really want that. I wonder who had the money and went ahead and got that. Oh, I hate you all, but I want to watch your videos because I want to see somebody else enjoy that. That's who it's aimed at. That's who this is focused towards. That's the kind of videos I like doing. But I also like occasionally just running my mouth about stuff that I enjoy that isn't necessarily tinkerable, that I've either owned for a while or had experience with in the past, still own something along those lines. So. That's why this video comes in kind of early because the M1 Grand is one of the rifles that I learned to shoot at back in the 1980s. <coughs> 80s. <coughs> anyway, back when I was younger. This isn't the exact rifle that I learned to shoot on, but for a long time I was kind of like, oh, I kind of want one of these, but I don't want a complete rattle trap one. You know, I kind of want one in decent condition, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to pay a fortune. Uh, I hemmed and hawed, put off for a lot of years, and this one I actually acquired in 2022, early 2022, I think. And it was in really good condition. I ran into it in a gun shop, and this is a genuine Springfield, and a bunch of the serial number is actually my social security number try doing that. So I decided that even though it was more money than I wanted to spend, it was going home with me because obviously it, containing a bunch of my serial number, it must be mine. So <laughs> I actually already owned ammo for it. I've been shopping for one for so long. But you can acquire one through the Civilian Marksmanship Program. There's a little routine that you go through which will include getting one to a local gun shop and doing a background check so you don't get any funky ideas about that. But they're available. They're out there. They're relatively common. Google it for yourself and figure out how many of the friggin' things were made. I mean, they were made by all kinds of different companies. A lot of service weapons that were in use during times of war were made by a lot of different companies. When I was an armorer in Korea, Bravo Company Second Engineers, I think it was Bravo Second Engineers. My brain's not working that great right now. 
but uh, in my arms room I had a, a Modus 50 caliber machine gun that was manufactured by Parker Brothers. Yeah, the board game company. Board games had small metal parts at the time, so they already had the machining to make small metal parts. So money, they started kicking out Modus machine guns, some of which are still in use today. So you'll see a lot of interesting things in American historical firearms from the World War II era when you start talking about who made them, when, what, why, and how. I mean, just, that's, to me, with those type of firearms, it's not as much about tinkering. It's about seeing all the fascinating stuff. You know, who did these? Who did that? Wow, that's kind of neat. Parker Brothers, no sh Really? Huh. Well, all right then. But it's a, I mean, it is what it is. You can get barrels for it, you can get a few accessories for it. You can historically look for bits and pieces and convert it over to like the sniper version or a few other things, but there is literally very little that you can do with the rifle other than owning it, maintaining it, shooting it, and having fun with it. So it falls into that category of firearms I don't do a lot of reviews on, but I don't hate. I, it, folks, <laughs> some of my videos may be boring and drone on a bit. I love firearms. The only thing I like fire, more than firearms is listening to myself talk because, you know, I'm a bit of a narcissist and obviously my opinion's vastly important because here I am on YouTube giving it to you guys. But there are very few firearms that I just haven't gotten much enjoyment out of. Well, unless they don't function. But that's another discussion. We're going to get into that one on a few things because what I like to do is present an unbiased, unbiased view on stuff that I have purchased, fired myself, regretted purchasing, not been able to fire because it didn't work right. You know, I'm going to discuss what my experiences are because at this time I haven't been bought yet. Now, that said, I can be bought. I mean, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I mean, let's face it, I put a number on that once. Um, once upon a time, back in the day, I was, my hoopty blew up, I was working, getting towards winter, I needed something other than my Harley Davidson to ride to work, so I started looking around for vehicles. I got my Harley Davidson when my dad died. So there's a bit of sentimental value there. So I ride onto this car lot, and this chuckle lug, it's like, oh, you're looking to trade that in, and I just kind of looked around, and I went, yeah, you know what, I'd take $10 million for it, because sentimental value's a bitch. So $10 million is a good number. If somebody throws $10 million at me, I'll give you a good review on anything. I will probably post down in the subtext that I've been paid off and do not believe what I have to say, but I will take the $10 million and verbally, I will give an outstanding review of pretty much any product. So that being said, you got $10 million. Whatever works for you. I might find a way to with $10 million to modify this M1 Garand and make it shoot 300 PRC. Pfft, sky's the limit at that point, huh? Okay then. So, this has been my short review of my M1 Garand with a little bit of chat about my personal history and my experience with the firearm in general, about how much I enjoy shooting sports, how much I enjoy my own voice when I'm giving people my opinion, and just generally stuff that I enjoy. I hope that you, as a viewer, have enjoyed this video. Maybe if not this video, because I'm a little arrogant. Whatever. You know you like it. Yeah, you do. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you enjoy my other videos. I hope you stick around. Like and subscribe to this video. Look around at a lot of other GunTube videos brought out by a lot of other people, as if you haven't already, because I've got so many followers. I've got you know people they don't have. Support your right to keep and bear arms. Support your right to free information. And just generally, look at a bunch of different things online. Because you know what? Between porn videos, you should probably look at something else. Y'all have a great day. Y'all come back now, you hear?